Have you ever looked at an emerald and thought how stunning it is? But then, when you see another one, it's also stunning, yet somehow completely different. Different hue, different glow, Maybe it even feels like a different stone altogether. Well, you're not imagining it. Unlike diamonds, which are prized for their uniformity and flawlessness, emeralds are celebrated for their uniqueness. In fact, no two emeralds in the world are ever exactly the same. And that's not just marketing talk. It's science, history, and a little bit of magic all rolled into one mesmerizing green gem. So join us today as we dive into the world of emeralds right here on History of Simple Things. Let's start at the very beginning, literally beneath the Earth's surface. Emeralds are a variety of the mineral barrel, just like aquamarine. But what makes emeralds emeralds is the presence of trace elements, specifically chromium and sometimes vanadium, which give them that iconic green color. Now here's where things get interesting. To form an emerald, you need very rare geological conditions. You need beryllium from one rock type and chromium or vanadium from a completely different one. And those elements don't usually hang out together underground. It's kind of like asking oil and water to mix perfectly. But under the intense heat and pressure of tectonic movement over millions of years, that chaotic, improbable formation process, it guarantees that every emerald ends up being its own little geological fingerprint. Let's make it more simple. The ingredients needed to make emeralds don't usually exist in the same place. So for an emerald to form, very rare conditions have to line up just right. It's a mix of heat, pressure, and the perfect blend of elements deep within the earth. Because that mix is never the same twice, every emerald comes out a little differently, like a natural surprise. But the differences go beyond just their formation. Let's talk inclusions those tiny internal features trapped inside a gemstone as it forms. In most gemstones, inclusions are seen as flaws. But with emeralds, they're called jardins, French for garden, because they can look like mossy little landscapes frozen inside the stone. And instead of hurting their value, these inclusions actually help prove authenticity. Each emerald's inclusions are as unique as a fingerprint. They tell us where the gem came from, how it formed, and even how old it is. Gemologists can often trace an emerald back to its mine of origin just by analyzing these tiny internal patterns. It's kind of poetic, isn't it? The imperfections are what make emeralds valuable, and no two imperfections are ever the same. Now let's travel the world for a second. Emeralds are mined in a handful of places. Colombia, Zambia, Brazil, Ethiopia, Afghanistan, and a few others. And guess what? Emeralds from each country have their own personality. Colombian emeralds, for example, are known for their vibrant bluish-green color and incredible clarity. Zambian emeralds tend to be a deeper, more saturated green with a slightly cooler tone thanks to their higher iron content. Brazilian emeralds? They're often lighter and brighter, with a lovely transparency. Even if you placed three emeralds with the exact same carat weight side by side, one from each country, they'd look and feel completely different. Not just in color, but in texture, brightness, and character. That's part of why jewelers and collectors don't just ask, is it a good emerald? They also ask, where is it from? The uniqueness of emeralds also plays a huge role in their cultural and historical significance. Throughout history, emeralds have been revered by civilizations, from the ancient Egyptians, who buried emeralds with their pharaohs, to the Mughals of India, 
who carved prayers into them. And royalty across Europe, especially in Spain, coveted Colombian emeralds during the height of the colonial era. Each of those historical gems tells its own story. You can't mass produce the kind of character an old emerald has. It carries its own journey, where it was mined, who wore it, how it was cut, and how it's been preserved. These aren't just stones, they're relics. Now you might be wondering, what about lab-created emeralds? Yes, synthetic emeralds exist. And yes, they can be beautiful and much more affordable. But even then, believe it or not, lab-created emeralds still vary. The synthetic process can't 100% mimic the chaotic forces of nature. So even if two lab emeralds are made in the same facility, slight changes in temperature, pressure, or trace chemicals can lead to different results. Still, while lab emeralds may share more similarities, the real deal, the natural ones, will always be more complex, more mysterious, and more individual. One of the most iconic emerald jewelry pieces in history belonged to Elizabeth Taylor, a true Hollywood legend. Her Colombian emerald pendant gifted by Richard Burton during their famously passionate relationship, was surrounded by diamonds and became one of her favorite pieces. She wore it often, and it was later sold at auction for millions of dollars. That emerald wasn't just valuable because of its size or color. It held a story of love, fame, and timeless glamour. Here's the takeaway. When you choose an emerald, whether it's for a necklace, a ring, or just as a collector, it's not just about color or size. You're choosing a story, a moment in geological history. That stone existed before your great-great-grandparents were even born. It formed over millions of years under impossible conditions. It was pulled from the earth by human hands, shaped by artisans, and now, somehow, it found its way to you. There's something deeply personal about that. And because no two emeralds are alike, your emerald is truly yours. No one else on earth or in history has one exactly like it. So next time you see an emerald, take a closer look. You're not just seeing a gemstone, you're seeing nature's fingerprint, a chapter of the earth's story and maybe even a part of your own. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.